that's what I'll do. Okay. Do that. We got it. Should we start with our, uh, our mask on? Yes. Where's my mask? And end with our masks. That's ah, good for I you. See, I see, who, I see where I am. Oh my, oh, look at that. You're in Washington Elementary School. I'm in 1917. Oh, that's <laughs> gorgeous. I love it. It's that's good, it. isn't it? Yes. Oh my goodness, that is great. I'm a fan of what, whoops, let's see. Here we go. That is wonderful. Okay. All right. All right, we're recording. Oh, good. All right. Well, let me take my mask off. Always wear your mask. And uh, hello, everybody. Uh, this is our uh, August 7th episode of Between Two Teachers. And uh, my name is Consuelo Lara. I'm Madeline Cronenberg. And once again, we are here greeting you from the land of the uh, Ohlone Chochenyo Corkin people. Um, and these are the same people, it's the same land, the ancestral land that the picture behind me, here is the teacher, let's see if I got her, there she is there uh where they were in in 1917 when we had our last pandemic and these children in, in this picture uh are at washington elementary school wearing their masks and so is their teacher as she's writing on the blackboard teaching school at washington in 1917 jeez they're not socially distancing but no they, they didn't know about that that, that, that all they knew about was, it's interesting that they knew about the mask, right? But, yeah, yeah, for sure. But they didn't know about social distancing. <laughs> so, uh, lots going on in the wonderful world of reopening schools. And, uh, and we do want to talk about that. Pull up my thing. Uh, the, the district has been busy this week, as, as, as really the whole country has been. And a lot of the issues that have come up have, have been around um, uh, around how, how contagious COVID is for all of us. And so I, I've listed some of this, the, uh, the data points that are out there um, with respect to uh, which states are open. Uh, this morning, Governor Cuomo was uh, talking about what they're gonna do in New York State. And then part of New York State, because he was so strict with, with closing it down, they're down to 1% infection rate as opposed to 17% or 20% in other places. So, uh, so they're seriously looking at bringing everybody back to school, right? Wow. They're also not letting anybody into New York State. Oh. A, they have put in a really serious quarantine so that uh, people are not coming in. So then, anyway, there are national reopening plans uh, and I've put in the, the that a list of them and the uh, maps of the different states that have uh, that have put that together, uh, along with another list I have is there's something called Virtual EL 2020, and anybody can watch this. So if you're just an interested party, um, I, I, I just uh, recommend it to you that you take a look at what uh, Larry Ferlazzo and others have done with putting together a. a a workshop on best practices for English language learners and how to motivate their families and how to to honor everybody's contribution right and also people are now having to look at how to handle really seriously for another six months uh, families that don't have access and don't have uh, online equipment right yeah yeah that's a big uh, issue that the digital divide and uh, constantly addressing it uh, trying to get uh, equipment to people and those hot spots, you know, and one of the things that came up was the whole issue of hubs and how that right. might, you know, be able to, I mean, if you don't have any access to that, you could come to these hubs and you can have your, um, you know, get the hot spot and you'd be able to, so that's still being developed. That's still, still being developed. It was right. on our agenda, but not a lot of details. Everything is 
moving so quickly and and other districts are doing it as well so we're gonna ha have they are doing it because it yeah. because it makes sense and other districts yeah. san francisco is the one that really has stepped up to do it and it, it's led by the san francisco uh recreation department for yeah. them yeah yeah right That's and so this is all about partnerships. Public agencies need to partner with each other in order for things to really get done. As never uh, before, cities, counties, district, as like they've never had before. So absolutely, resources. Has, has to be done. Okay. Uh, there, I, I also have a note here about uh, a young lady named Hannah Waters. And Hannah is a uh, high school student in Georgia who took a picture of a very crowded high school hallway that went viral because you could see the students in this uh, district, and she got suspended for taking this picture, but uh, the students in this district are, uh, are not wearing their masks in, in school, and they are crowded up in the hallway. And so there's gotta be a consequence to that because they're, they're dis the, Georgia it does not have the advantages that New York has of a very low infection rate. Georgia has a high infection rate. And, um, Anyway, so that, 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 as of today, that's very much in the news. And why would she get in trouble for doing that? I mean, that's the whole politicizing of this virus. You know, why are we hiding? Right, right, what, what right. Are we hiding? right. She posted to social media. I mean, they had to really reach out and say, oh, no, you're not, no one's allowed. Here's what will happen if anybody else does this. You will be suspended. Well, she's famous now. She'll probably get into Harvard because she did this, right? And, and she should. She's famous now. I am talking about Hannah Waters, who is proud of what she did. That's the good news. She is proud of what she did. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, okay. there's no one would ever have suspected that was true until she posted it. Yeah. Absolutely no one. And I would encourage all of our students, you see something? Take a big yeah, look at it. We need the, to know what's going on. That, right. We need to know what's going on, all of us. Yeah, there's no secrets here. We want this thing to go away. We yeah. want to do the best, the best we so can. We all have to be on the same page, working to make that happen. Um, yeah. Then for the state this week, the ethnic studies folks, the people, and uh, um, a group called the Instructional Quality Commission yep. is uh, reviewing the ethnic studies recommendations. And uh, last time we talked about the 1619 project, so that's not specifically connected to that, but it is a work in, pro in, in progress. And uh, that's the big thing about it. And we are, you know, we're moving, they're moving forward on it. So there will be a hearing, the hearing is on, uh, public, it's on Zoom, you can watch it on, on uh, August 13th, they put the link to the hearing um, on, the, uh, on the Trello card. Yes, uh, yeah. And so that's, there's just, there's progress there. Yes. Then locally, we had a presentation on the, on the, uh, on the distance learning program in West Contra Costa, right? And the MOU that the teachers, which, have been, which has really been celebrated by so many people because the one thing about the MOU in West Contra Costa is it really respects our uh, teachers as the professionals that they are. And it doesn't assume, some of these MOUs assume that every teacher is trying to cheat and every teacher is just a lazy bum and every, I mean, it's all part of the demonizing of the profession, right? And every teacher has to be, have her, her iPad or her, her, uh, her uh, computer on eight hours straight and just be sitting there glued in front of it. And if she's not, yeah. you know, it's because she's a lazy bum. Yeah, it's right. very insulting. It's very insulting. And it's also the weakening of trying to, uh, of our unions, uh, you know, so. Um, it's yeah. deprofessionalizing. It's deprofessionalizing, right? Absolutely. You don't make your lawyer or your, when, when you're paying your lawyer, you don't, you don't really know. They just tell you how long it took to do something and you pay the bill because you respect their profession. Exactly. And, exactly. You, and this is the exact opposite. This is clock in, clock out, and I have to see you on there. Uh, anyway, there are some sure. districts that have taken that position. That is not the role, that, that is not the position that West Contra Costa took. West Contra Costa gave the, the authority, the agency to the professional to figure out how he or she is going to uh, plan out their day and just gave them parameters of how long but they could they could work it out and uh, and it's been uh, celebrated as a model 
of, uh, of, of respect for teachers and uh, listening to what they needed and to what parents needed. And, uh, and the people who are critical are the people who believe that the teachers are trying to cheat because that's the only, that's basically it. And which is not to say that there are, that every teacher delivered everything in the exact same way and that there isn't room for improvement, but it's not by diminishing the agency of everybody. It's supporting those who are struggling to really get their job done for whatever their reason is. Exactly. And if you want more information about it, in the last agenda, there is a link to the slideshow, which is quite lengthy. It goes into great detail, uh, what stage we are right now, uh, what the core values are, uh, what our priorities are, what's in the memorandum. Right. Um, it even it gives I posted it on the yes. Trello. It's posted it's on the that. Trello so that they can, anybody who's interested can, can, can look at it. Got and use it as a model in your district. I mean, if you, you know, take a look at, at what it says. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of sample, sample schedules for secondary and elementary. It's very useful for people. Oh, and then this was great. A wellness Friday. Wellness right. Friday. This is very important. Right. Uh, and, and the most important thing, really, I thought, was not dictating that teachers had to come in but also allowing them to come in if they want to because you have this huge range of what's going on in each teacher's life some teachers really do want to get back into their classroom and it serves them and they can organize their life in a way that they could be there all day and teach from there and that will work yeah. for them yeah other yeah. teachers there is no possibility of that i mean some yeah. teachers need to go in simply because the internet access is so much better from their world exactly Exactly. But others yeah. have their own children to have to take care of. They have, you know, they have uh, long commutes and the, and, uh, the uh, options for them are, are, are very different. So to yeah. allow the teacher to make that call makes much more sense. Absolutely. You know, and, and it yeah. supports their success. And also a teacher then could say, I'm going to go in two days a week, however, whatever schedule they want that they know it will work for their students and for them. Yeah. Exactly. I know I'd want to teach from my classroom because that's where all my stuff is. Exactly. <laughs> that's where I exactly. want to teach from. I don't want to exactly. love all that but stuff. But some people have figured out, you know, have it all put out at home and have a home studio set up and something, you know, and for all of that. Some people have, you know, really depending on grade level, depending on content. I mean, one size does not fit all. All teachers right. are not going to do this all the same. So, right. you know, your department, your grade levels, you're going to collaborate and come up with the best practices to get the best out of the, each teacher. You've got to give them that respect to make those decisions. Right exactly. exactly. So, and, and that is what has happened now. We've been, uh, we, we got there. Not every district got there. Some districts, because they don't trust their teachers, are having them all come in. Oh, dear. Right? Yeah. And some of them are having to bring their children with them. I mean, it, it's just a, because... They don't have any other options. It's become, it's, anyway, it's a very yeah. interesting yeah. time how this is playing itself out. And as of right now, the MOU that West Contra Costa uh, came to, uh, it, to uh, decide with its uh, labor unions is really a model of success. I mean, it really does look like it's, it is a model. So that's a really good thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. For the sure. other thing you, you talked about a little bit was this whole uh, learning continuity plan, which I'm just going to say is, is a plan that's out there to, um, it, it replaces the LCAP, the local control accountability plan. And it's a plan that just tells the state how you're using money, some of the extra money. And, um, and so that's a conversation that's, that's, uh, that's happening. And, th and that presentation was given. Mm. Then um, I didn't have too much on the take action because the action really is still the same. It's, uh, it's around the, the uh, money that has to come from the feds and, our, um, and Nancy Pelosi and everybody else. They're all working on that now to figure out how much they're going to be able to bring back into, to, to give to the states. You know, to to reimburse us and uh, and so we just can continue i'll put i'll i'll put it back uh in terms of where we were before but we don't have uh, a new action right now yeah yeah we're just continuing that making our voices heard yeah okay yeah 
Did you and, have, you wanted to mention something about just about funding? Because uh, one thing that is happening, the campaign season is beginning. Uh, people who are running for uh, political office have a, a, there are two deadlines. For some people, the deadline is tomorrow or today, and for others, it's um, it's next week. Yeah, I uh, you know what's oh gosh. So what's coming up are different uh, candidates and people aligning themselves with, you know, who's uh, endorsing who. So who's going to get funding by who and some outrageous amounts of money that some people put in to get a seat, to buy a seat on the school boards who don't really represent anybody. I don't think they represent the corporations who gave them that money and they didn't um, really get uh, voted on their own merits. I, I think, you know, so we got to be careful of that. And if, and I, I have to warn people that are running, if you take money from certain, especially those corporate linked uh, individuals, that stays with you. That People don't forget that, that you know, people will see that uh, those where your values are, that they're not really aligned with um, public supporting and protecting public education. And uh, I don't know if people just naive, they don't follow the money, or believe that, you know, corporations know better somehow. The billionaires know how to reform education and they believe it. I don't know what's going on there, but people need to be careful about this, uh, where they take their money. And we as voters, we need to make sure we know who is supporting who and where the money is coming from. Right. I think that's so important. Right. Uh, and we will bring that information as much as we can. Um, and the organizations, because some of those, Organizations like Go Public, they funnel, like uh, Mike Hutchison said, it's a slush fund for uh, campaigns. Yeah. These are not people that care about teaching and learning. These are, you know, billionaires that care about power and control. And they want control of the vendors and they want contracts and they Real want- Real estate. Oh my gosh, the real estate. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, and they see especially charter schools as money-making machines. So all of that is going on. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's true, it's real, and it's something we gotta fight. We have to fight because they have a lot of money and they're certainly not gonna give up until they have, they, they want us to be like Oakland or Los Angeles where they are, uh, the corporations really control um, all, of, all of the policies there. And we don't want that. We're gonna continue to fight against that by exposing it. And right making sure people with facts, with the facts, that's what we're going to do. So that's about what my feeling about campaign financing right now. There'll be more. We'll be oh, more. much more. It's all, we've only just begun. We've only just begun. So yeah. on that note, do we have yeah. anything from our, our, our uh, comedic writer? I don't know if he sent, we sent, had something last week. I think so. He said he sent okay. like two, and so there's a second. You got it? Okay, go ahead. Okay, let me see. Um, oh, <laughs> I remember this one. Um, uh, two jokes. Okay. Um, what is the world's tallest building? I don't know, Consuelo. What is the world's tallest building? It's the library because it has so many stories. Oh, yet another good. My friends here in the classroom and I. <laughs> oh, yeah. <Yay. laughs> okay, everybody, we'll see you okay. next week. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye.